Hello and welcome to Lessons Learned Using Scylla DB with Janice Graff for Cybersecurity. We're excited to present this material today because uh, Angad and I actually met for the first time at last year's Scylla Summit and uh, everything you see presented and demoed to you today has been forged since that uh, relationship was started uh, last year. Over to you, Angad. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Angad Salaria from Complex. For those of you who haven't heard about us, we were founded in 2015. Our headquarters in Tyson's, Virginia and are building an analytics as a service solution we call Complex OS, which besides being its own offering, also powers our decision platforms for cybersecurity, insurance, and uh, quantitative finance. Brian Holho here is Graph Analytics Practice Lead at Xpero. Him and team have been developing the uh, graph solutions expertise over the past few years. We connected last year at Scylla Summit, as he noted. Uh, connected over graph technologies, Scylla, but really found out that we could come together and solve for some use cases at Complex. So the use case we're going to be presenting today has to do with our cybersecurity solution uh, and centers around the user persona of a cybersecurity analyst. You know, the motivation we've had at Complex on the cybersecurity side has been to enable and empower the network defenders with tools that they can use to gain insights into how attackers can exploit uh, transitive and uh, counterintuitive information schemes to pivot around a network using techniques such as lateral movement or privilege, privilege escalation, and et cetera. You know, cybersecurity incidents are pretty rampant these days. Uh, as a cybersecurity analyst, you find yourself at the center of the storm asking key pertinent questions such as, has an asset in my network been compromised? Is it a high value asset? Uh, can high value assets be reached from the compromised portion of my network? And so we find that a graph uh, technology is better suited at answering these kind of questions. So in this particular use case, what we do is we ingest Active Directory data or into from on, from the customer side and produce a graph representation of that data. You know, Active Directory itself essentially is a database at the end of the day. But if you want to ask more sophisticated questions, such as what kind of uh, attack paths exist to key assets, what access patterns are structured in my directory, you know, your traditional Active Directory provided list view and query paradigm is going to fall short. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to jump into a demo and highlight some of the features that we've been developing over the past few months. So let's dive right in. All right, so what you're looking at over here is our cybersecurity uh, decision platform. I'm logged in as a cybersecurity analyst, and essentially this particular page, you're looking at trends and key summarized statistics that are representative of your network. But very quickly, I can start uh, reasoning about deviations from standard policy and best practices in directory services. As an example, you know the number of non-admin users able to create computers, let's say that spikes suddenly, I might be interested in finding out why that happened. You could uh, produce a list view, but for the purpose of this demo, the fun part is the is the graph canvas. So I pivoted to that particular user account, in this case, the guest account, and you can start uh, exploring neighboring associations. So in this case, we see it's a it's a member of a couple of couple of guest groups, and then there's there are administrative groups that have ACLs, which is privileges to that user account to manage that user account. I can bring in additional nodes using the search facility on the right. Start exploring it the same in a similar way, uh, highlighting some of the UI features. Let's say I can. I, I could color by type, try out a different layout uh, based on the purpose, hierarchical, concentric. You know, I, I find hierarchical top-down to be particularly suited for AD data structures. Uh, by the way, as I've been doing these graph reversals, uh, these are backed by the Janus and Scylla infrastructure. So end of the day, these are Gremlin queries I'm invoking. Now, one less, key lesson learned, never allow the user to uh, explode the graph to obnoxiously large size. So produce filters proactively, and you know when we see uh, that possibility of the graph being explored, that it's obnoxiously unmeaningful, so to say, we, we uh, compel the user to uh, produce filters. I'd like to bring attention to these two nodes over here. This, this administrator has a session on this workstation. What I'm going to do is pivot to a different view. We're going to produce a couple of attack paths over here. And so there you go. When, when might this workflow be useful to an analyst? So let's say this desktop has been compromised. Uh, perhaps there's a local uh, workstation account that has local admin rights to this desktop. Well, guess what? For the, for the duration that this administrator has a session on that workstation, if that actor, that local uh, account holder is, is a malicious actor, using some fairly common and readily available techniques, uh, that actor can uh, compromise, get hold of credentials of this administrator account. At that point, this, this account is compromised. And as you can see, you have multiple paths to the domain controller on the network. There might be other other particular assets I might be interested in finding out if are if are now vulnerable. In this case, we see this member server. Uh, perhaps there's credit card information stored over there, 
or there's a database hosted over there where the sensitive user information, you know, at this point you wanna get ahead and start taking actions to protect that information. What I did in this case was produce attack paths to very key uh, specific assets I was interested in protecting. Perhaps I wanna find out what other assets that might be vulnerable at this point. So what I can produce is a blast radius is what we call it, which essentially represents uh, the outreach uh, from the central focal point and hops out in this case, that's four. So all these red nodes over here denote objects that are reachable uh, in that radius. Now, what we did over here is uh, show some of the facilities on the cyber side. I'm gonna sh pull up the, the platform now. And, and this is the platform view because over here what you can do is you can start applying capabilities available on our core platform to the same data set. In this case, we're looking at a notebook facility where one can perform more power user activities such as, let's say, direct gremlin queries uh, to that same graph data set, which happens to be Janus Graph in this case, but the platform provides convenient integrations into uh, data sets hosted on other stores such as time series relational or, or wide column stores such as Scylla. All right, that wraps up the demo. Let's talk about, talk about uh, technical details behind all of this, starting with the architecture. On the data ingestion side, there are, there's, there's a set of data collectors that collect the AD information and send it over to us. We ingest it and transform it and put it in a staging area. And that has been a key learning to us, is that we put it in a staging area which acts as a source of truth and then there are multiple uh, extraction routines that take it out and, and uh, store it in different stores based on the purpose. What we find is there's no one magic data store that solves all, all problems. So based on your needs, insights and analytics, required, you might want to place it in different uh, different uh, stores, including in memory, which is, in our case, is powered by Bootstrap, which we'll talk about in, in a minute. We're very proud of the features we've developed over here in the past few months. It's been a long journey, a lot of lessons learned, and we're happy to share that with the community. So I'm going to pass it to Brian, uh, who's going to cover the, that portion. Over to you, Brian. Thanks, God. So what did we learn during this project? First of all, is if we needed another reminder, Graph analytics jobs are tough and computationally expensive. While not all applications require sub-second responses, in our case, our SOC analysts did. Uh, we couldn't afford to wait several minutes or hours in order to do some of the path analysis you saw in OnGod's demo. OLAP workloads in Janus are commonly offloaded to Spark. Uh, as a baseline, we tried this well-worn path. While, uh, while we still offer this facility for some of the more generalized workloads for the SOC analyst, 30 minute response times just wasn't gonna cut it. Shorter path queries would return in several minutes or hours and then longer queries just simply were not uh, feasible, uh, taking days or simply not ever completing. Therefore, for a small number of the key co computations, we opted to use something called Boost Graph. Boost Graph is a minimum subset of the graph stored in memory. And while you can't use it as a proper graph database, you can use it for, for very specific computations. Uh, furthermore, it can be spun up and down as needed so that you don't have runaway hosting costs and you can uh, manage instance sizes uh, to use only the memory that you require. Uh, and it was worth it. Uh, in Boost Graph, we were able to get the most common path queries uh, to return sub-second. And this is what the SOC analyst use cases required. And it was a game changer in terms of uh, the user experience we were able to provide. Another key takeaway, as is common in most data pipelines, was whether updates coming in from clients' Active Directory instances would come in as a batch or streaming messages. Uh, streaming presents problems in sequencing of the data. For instance, what happens to edges when edges come in for the vertices that they connect? How do you send over deletions uh, in Active Directory? And in general, uh, detecting changes in AD is just not that simple. Uh, we also learned wholesale batches pose challenges. Uh, rather than doing upserts into fully populated graphs, we opted to keep multiple revisions of a client's AD uh, yesterday's version, today's, the day before yesterday, et cetera. And due to the nuances of how that was organized at the client, a single client may have several AD forests and several days versions of it. So, so we had an explosion of graphs um, uh, possible. A big new learning was uh, something that required a patch all the way back to the Janus community was how to handle this high number of, of graphs. Uh, normally you see in graph discussions uh, the, the notion of how do you deal with, with uh, very, very big graphs. Our problem was slightly different in that what we were dealing with was lots of normal size graphs rather than single big ones. Uh, so we found ourselves traipsing through a part of the code base that needed, uh, needed some surgery and was somewhat immature. 
namely the ability to add and remove graphs on the fly, something uh, called the, the configured graph factory. Uh, as we got into this part of the code base, we also recognized that uh, Janus did not handle high cardinality of graphs per server very well, as it put a lot of uh, heat pressure, uh, memory heat pressure, and we had to actually spend some time working on cleanup routines as well. What can we say about monitoring and DevOps? Uh, don't cut corners here. As you have multiple representations of graph data in different data stores, uh, making sure they're in sync is non-trivial. Uh, Complex has an, a sophisticated authorized to operate or ATO process that uh, was a good rubric for uh, putting together such observability monitoring standards. Uh, and last but not least, why were we all here in the first place? Uh, Scylla underneath Janus. Uh, we came last year to last year's summit, a big fan of uh, Scylla underneath Janus, and our, our, our viewpoint is, is only hardened. Uh, it just worked. In a, in, a, in a project fraught with challenges and multi-technologies, this, uh, this provided no drama whatsoever. It just worked. Uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please reach out to On God or I uh, through either of the channels here. Thank you for your time.